Alrighty, hi everyone. I'm sorry now officially. <laughs> I will I will do a short intro. Welcome oh. everyone. My name is Makaya Jackson. I'm the director of the CTY Scholars Program here at CTY, and today I am excited to chat with Anna Marie Famey. Uh, the Associate Director of Admissions at Mullenberg College in Pennsylvania. And without further delay, Anna Marie can get us started. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Rick. I am so excited to be here today and talk about um, our school. So my name is Anna Marie. Um, I go by Anna Marie or Anna. Uh, and I am the associate, one of the associate directors of admission here at Muhlenberg. Uh, fun fact about my role is that I'm actually based in Southern California. That is not where Muhlenberg is. <laughs> I'll talk about our location in a bit. Um, so I'm one of our regional representatives based in Southern California, and I manage all of our West Coast recruitment efforts. Um, so I work remotely for Muhlenberg, but I'm part of the admissions team who travels, recruits, presents about Muhlenberg to students, read applications. We're just jumping into that season now. So it's always exciting for me to transition from meeting students on the road to looking at your applications. It's one of my favorite parts about the job. So thank you so much for everyone coming and I'm happy to dive now into more of my presentation. I'm gonna cover some basics of Muhlenberg, you know, quick facts, figures, um, our academic programs, study abroad opportunities. I'll talk a bit about admissions and financial aid at the end as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to, um, you know, pull them throughout and I, I think we'll have designated time at the end for, for Q&A. All right, now I will try to advance my slide and hope I do that right here we go. Yep. Okay, uh, there's my name. I already did that. Okay, so um, you should see a slide now with uh, the map of where we are. So Muhlenberg College, um, we, uh, fun fact, remember how to, I know it's a tricky name to pronounce. I got this wrong when I started. Uh, our mascot is a mule. His name is Marty the Mule. So we are the mules of Muhlenberg College. <laughs> um, so Muhlenberg College is a small private liberal arts college in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Um, Allentown is about an hour and 45 minutes outside of New York City and about an hour outside of Philadelphia. Um, but we're also in our own urban metropolitan area as well. Allentown is in the Lehigh Valley. That's one of the fastest growing, actually the fastest growing region in the state of Pennsylvania, one of the fastest growing regions in the country. Um, and Allentown is the third largest city in the state of Pennsylvania. So you're not in a small town, you are in a city of about 120,000 people. I like Allentown because it has a rich history, but it's also rapidly growing, as I just mentioned. Uh, Allentown's claim to fame back in 1777, if anyone's a history nerd, you'll like this fact. Um, Allentown is where the Liberty Bell was hid for an entire year, almost a whole year. Um, the Revolutionary Forces took the Liberty Bell from Philadelphia, where the British had, where it was British occupied Philadelphia. They took the bell up to Allentown to hide it, and it, and it was hidden in a church basement for almost a year. They didn't want the British forces to melt it down to be used for weapons in the in the war. So the, we had the Liberty Bell for a whole year. Now you can visit the Liberty Bell Museum in downtown Allentown. Downtown Allentown is just a few minutes away from our campus. So we are in a suburban part of Allentown in the neighborhood area. Uh, Allentown overall is known for its rich history, like I mentioned, but also cultural events and extensive park system, a diverse array of restaurants. Some of these you can find walking distance from campus. There's a mom and pop local coffee shop down the street from campus. There's also a farmer's market that's open on the weekends that students like to frequent. There's a beautiful park with basketball courts, a lake and a rose garden across the street from campus as well. And then a short drive away from our campus, there's fun stuff to do, like there's an amusement park five minutes away, the Dorney, Dorney Amusement Park. Uh, there's a, are the um, uh, minor league baseball stadium. I love going there when I'm on campus. I actually have more fun at a minor league baseball game than I do at a major league baseball game because they're closer to the field. So that's a fun time if you like baseball. And uh, we're also, like I said, a few minutes away from downtown Allentown. That's where you can find sort of the hub of downtown Allentown, which is the PPL Center. We have different events and concerts that happen there. Adam Sandler was just there a couple weeks ago doing the show. So people come to Allentown, there's fun stuff to do. Uh, whether you're a foodie, whether you want to sort of just get in the outdoors, there's also a ski resort not too far away from where we are, um, whether you want to experience some cultural and music events. And then, of course, that's just where we are in Allentown. You have New York City and Philly nearby as well. And our students go into the city. Um, just last, I think it was last Saturday or two Saturdays ago, students took a bus trip. It was 20 bucks for the for the bus trip to from campus to New York. Uh, the bus left at 10 a.m. and then you uh, just you do whatever you want while you're in New York. We just got to get back on the bus at 6 p.m. to make it back to campus. Uh, last year, a group of students also took a bus to New York City to go see Wicked on Broadway, and that was 40 bucks for the bus ticket, but also for the uh, play the ticket to go see the play. 
So a lot to do where we are. And for those of you who are from outside of this area, outside of the East Coast, if you're wondering how do I get to campus, uh, there is an airport that we have about 15 minutes away from our campus that you can get to from a distance, usually with a layover, depending on where you're coming from. It's called the Lehigh Valley International Airport. Um, and then there's also the various airports in Philadelphia and the New York, New Jersey region. When I visit campus, I fly into Newark Airport in New Jersey, and that's about an hour and 20 minutes away from campus. We have a shuttle that picks up students to and from our local airport, but then also pay transportation to and from the uh, New York and Philly airports around break time. So long story short, you can get to where we are. <laughs> And then in terms of like who we are, we are a small school. Uh, average student faculty ratio is eight to one. That's very small. You really get to, you get to know your professors here. The average class size is 15 students. So we are the kind of place where you get to know your faculty, you get to know other students well, you really get to feel like a big fish in a small pond. And we're also becoming increasingly more diverse just in terms of where students are coming from, uh, first generation students, and also students who identify as students of color. This, this incoming class is about 29.6% students of color and almost 23% first in their family to go to college. And I also actually, before I eventually slide, if you see at the bottom left of this slide, the red doors, you can also see a better shot in my virtual background. Um, the, uh, every exterior door on campus, so every door that leads to the outside at Muhlenberg is bright red. This is a signature part of our campus. A red door is a sign of welcome. This is my favorite part of campus, is just walking around and seeing the pop of red everywhere you go. And Muhlenberg is a very welcoming community because of this. The symbolism really embodies what we're about. We are the kind of place where we hold the door open for people. So it's very, very common for students as you're making your way rushing to class, the door is already open for you by another student also rushing to class. Um, so it's just a welcoming place where we like to hold the door open for others. And it's a place I think too, where as a welcoming community, we wanna make sure that you have the freedom to study what you want. Um, and we have all, see this slide here with majors, minors, I'll talk about a few of these. Um, as a liberal arts college, it's really important to us that you have the freedom to explore. That is essentially the definition of liberal arts. A liberal arts college doesn't mean that the school is liberal politically, um, and it doesn't mean that it's an art school. So it's a very confusing term, at least it was for me in high school. Liberal arts, if you think back to the very roots of those words, liberal meaning sort of openness, free, and art, think of uh, something that you do, like a skill, like where artisan comes from, right? Artifact, these are man-made things, things that man do, people do. So the whole premise of what liberal arts is, is this freedom to do, freedom to explore. And that's the premise of a liberal arts education, and that's what we do at Muhlenberg. We want to make sure that you have the freedom to explore what you want. So I know a lot of you said that you're interested in science, right? This is a fantastic place to pursue science. You're going to get quality education in whatever sort of science field you're interested in. Maybe that's biology, maybe that's chemistry, maybe it's biochemistry, or maybe it's like one of our newer majors, like sustainability studies. That's an interdisciplinary look at science and the environment. Um, some of our newest, or some majors that are increasing in popularity at Muhlenberg, computer science is becoming more and more popular. So it's a very strong program that we have at, uh, at Muhlenberg. Uh, two other programs in science that are also becoming more popular are neuroscience and public health. And I like to highlight neuroscience and public health. These may be majors that you'll find at a you know giant large university. I don't say I don't think that they're quite common for a school as small as we are. Remember, we're just about two thousand students um, to have these as undergraduate majors. So if you're thinking about neuroscience, public health, even you know computer science, environmental studies, these are options that you have to pursue in an environment where you will have small class sizes. Our average class size, like I said, is about fifteen students. So you won't find three hundred person lecture halls here at Nuremberg. Um, so overall, what do our students like to do? I talked a lot about science, right? We're big with, with science, um, but also Muhlenberg is known for the performing arts. So we're a very diverse place. Uh, theater, our top, all the stars just our top five majors. So you have an idea of what students are interested in. This is by no means an order of the best majors. These are just the most popular, generally speaking. So that's theater, biology, business, political science, and psychology. So I share all five of those. So you get a sense of, wow, <laughs> students are really diverse, spread out sort of across the interests. Um, and it's not like these are different pools of students, right? I mean, it's not like our theater students only hang out in the theater department or pre-med students only hang out with other pre-med students. That is not at all true. Um, about 30% of our students double major. And it's quite common, especially across art and science to see that come together. Dance and biology or dance and neuroscience are common double majors that I've seen. 
And that actually makes sense with our curriculum because we have a dance science concentration. So if you're interested in kinesiology, anatomy, and how that relates to both sort of like the, the science of movement, art and science, um, I find that that's an easy thing for students to be able to pursue both together at Nuremberg. Other common combos I've seen are theater and business. And the reason, there's one big reason why is because within our business program, we have an arts administration concentration. So maybe you're someone who loves the arts, but you're also interested in the business side of it and marketing. Um, that's something that you could pursue as a double major as well. Uh, theater and political science is also a common crossover. I've seen our student body president last year, Zaire Carter, that was his double major, theater and political science. So the opportunities are endless. We don't admit by major or by program. Um, so you do put on your application what you're interested in studying, but you actually have until the end of your second year at Muhlenberg to officially declare your major. And you work with your advisor throughout your first two years to figure out what classes you should take, what the general academic requirements are, how you can sort of pursue various things if you're interested in that, how you can fit study abroad in, all of those conversations you're going to be having frequently throughout your two years. And actually they'll start in June. We have June advising. And I mentioned that because that's, that's, quite, that's quite before you start um, your time at Muhlenberg. So classes start at the end of August, beginning of September, but in June, you already sort of have the ball rolling and rolling to know what classes you're gonna take. Um, so I just wanna highlight a couple other things. So um, I don't know if anyone's interested in performing arts on this call, but like I said, theater and dance are you know big department on campus. Um, students can also be involved in the performing arts, but not be a major. So let's say you love playing an instrument or you like being on stage, but it's not something that you want to pursue as a major or a minor. You can still be involved in the visual and performing arts at Nuremberg, even if you're not a major. Um, our theater and dance department put on about six main stage productions each year, and they're about 20 to 40 student-led productions. And these range from stage readings to musical theater performances to acapella performances to dance performances. There's a lot of opportunity if you want to be on stage in front of your peers and perform. Science, I talked about a bit. Science is also very popular at Nuremberg, and I'll share a couple of things I haven't talked about yet. If anyone is particularly interested in pre-health, so maybe pre-med or pre-dental, we're a fantastic place for that. I'll share a couple of stats. Our acceptance rate to medical school for the last few years has been 87%. 87 is a really good number. And if you're wondering or a little skeptical, how do we get that? Uh, a couple of things. So we have a strong pre-health advising program. Each year, about 300 to 350 students are on that track. It is a robust program on campus with a variety of advising resources. Also our location. Healthcare is one of the largest industries in the Lehigh Valley. That's where we are. There are about 800,000 people in the Lehigh Valley. So again, we're out in a small part of Pennsylvania. We are in a metropolitan area. What that means is walking distance from campus, you have one hospital and another mile or so away, there's another hospital. So within mile or so of campus, you have two different hospitals. And these, uh, and if you go on our website, you can see the different internship and volunteer opportunities that students can do at one of those two hospitals. One student stayed on campus over the summer and did oncology research at one of those hospitals. And there's a video about her actually on the hospital's website. Um, so it's a great opportunity to sort of just get involved in, in uh, with uh, local sort of medical opportunities. A lot of our alums are also involved in healthcare. And during winter break, we um, allow our alums to host what we call shadow days. So these are, you know, a day or maybe a few days a week where you can shadow an alum near you back at home uh, in, in, in all industries, but also in healthcare. Um, so last winter break, there was a student who shadowed a psychiatrist. There was a student who shadowed an orthopedic surgeon. There was a student who shadowed a, um, uh, what was it, the other one? Uh, oh, oh, a, a fertility clinic in town. So there's a lot of opportunity to sort of figure out, you know, especially if you know that you want to be pre-med or pre-health and you're like, well, what actual sort of field or niche am I interested in? And you can meet with a Muhlenberg alum who, who does that. And our alums, um, even from just uh, like previous classes, are doing fascinating things. One of our alums works at the University of Washington and the Seattle Children's Hospital, and he is a leader in bioethics, and he was a philosophy and biology major at, at Muhlenberg. And so for him, his really he's really fascinated not only in medicine, but the ethics of medicine. And so that's what he was actually our graduation speaker last year. Um, I also just got a Mule, the Muhlenberg magazine in the mail. The front cover is one of our alums who works in Nebraska, and he is on some leading forefront research for HIV, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disease. So alums do a lot of things if you're interested in healthcare. There's, it's, it's a big, big part of our community. Okay, um, and then last thing I'll say about that is if you see at the bottom right of the screen here, academic partnerships. So these, this is not the full list of where students go to graduate school. 
Um, this is just a list of official partnerships that we have with some graduate schools. And so most of these you can apply for when you're a Muhlenberg student. So let's say you come to Muhlenberg and you're really interested in the, you know, Boston University Med School program, then you can sort of go through that process and apply to that program. Or maybe at the bottom here, Villanova University School of Law, that's our newest partnership. That is a three plus three law school program. That means three years at Muhlenberg, three years at law school. So most of these you don't need to worry about until you're a student at Muhlenberg. The only two you would um, have to worry about now if you're a high school senior are the University of Pennsylvania School of Dental Medicine and the SUNY College of Optometry. Um, so if you're interested in applying to either one of those programs, those are actually the programs you apply for as a high school senior, they're early admission programs to either that optometry program or that dental school program. I know those are pretty niche, so I'll stop there with that, but if you have any questions about how that works, feel free to ask me. And then, um, and then outside of science, I just want to highlight a couple of other sort of academic interests. Uh, I mentioned business. Our business program is robust. Um, within business, you can pursue, or within the business administration department, there's accounting, finance, and economics. So there's a lot of opportunity within sort of that field to pursue your various interests. Um, and then we also are a great place for political science. I like to talk about political science at Newburgh. You can study political science, but there's also political economy and public policy um, and political thought. Uh, so there's a lot of different flavors of political science, as I like to say. Newburgh is a great place for the politically active student. In the 2020 presidential election, which I know feels like forever ago now, um, in that election, 82.6% of Muhlenberg students voted. That is a high, high, high student voting rate, much, much higher than the national average. Um, we also bring speakers to campus. The Muhlenberg Republicans, Muhlenberg Democrats, and our nonpartisan group, uh, the three of these groups work together to bring speakers to campus. For example, last fall, we had um, the city of Allentown, their mayoral debates, the, you know, the mayor race. We brought those two candidates to campus to have their debate. In March, I think it was March, uh, March or February, we also brought uh, the Pennsylvania Democrats who were running for U.S. Senate. Um, they, those candidates also came to campus and had their first televised debate on our campus. A couple of weeks ago, we had Jill Biden on campus and she was speaking on behalf of Susan Wilde's campaign for Congress. So a good option if you want to sort of just be in a place where, you know, this local and national politics coming to campus and you can be engaged with those conversations and people. And last but not least, within political science, I also love to highlight our polling center. We have a polling center on campus. This is a department that conducts political research surveys. So if you want to be the person that like sends out text messages or calls people, local Pennsylvanians, say, how do you feel about this issue? How do you feel about this? Um, that's an opportunity that you can be engaged with at Muhlenberg. And overall, just makes us, again, a fantastic place to be um, if you're interested in politics, political engagement, political activism. So I'm going to go ahead and move along now and talk about some other aspects of uh, about Muhlenberg. Um, it's about, it's saying, you know, the, I think the classroom experience is phenomenal at Muhlenberg, right? But we also want students to go and leave for a little bit, which sounds weird. But we want you to have the study abroad opportunity. And we make we want to make sure that that's something that you have as part of your time at Muhlenberg, whether that is a semester long study abroad program or a short term program. Um, so we have 141 approved study abroad programs in 56 countries and four domestic locations. There's a lot of opportunity to go out and go abroad. A couple of key programs that we have include uh, theater in London, theater in New York City, uh, a business program in the Netherlands, film studies in Ireland, um, dance in Italy, and I think I'm forgetting another big one. So, uh, but that, that is not the full list of where our students go abroad. There's just a couple of popular programs that we have. So the opportunities are endless. I studied abroad when I was in college and it was the best decision I made. It was really great to be able to live somewhere else for a semester. I took one class for my major, but the other classes I took were not related to my major. I took classes on European history, European immigration. I was in Europe uh, and it was a fantastic opportunity for me to sort of think about my academics in a different context outside of just the U.S. So study abroad, um, either a semester long program or we also have programs that are called MILA, M-I-L-A. That stands for Muhlenberg Integrated Learning Abroad. And these are short term programs. Uh, think they're usually about two weeks long and they're programs that you go on at the end of a class that you take at Muhlenberg. So uh, for example, the, the photo that you see on the right, this is a photo from um, the trip in Bangladesh. There's a class at Muhlenberg called Climate Change in Bangladesh. And so students are learning about climate change. And then at the end of the class they take at Muhlenberg, they go on this trip to Bangladesh to continue studying just the different sort of effects of climate change and what the communities there are doing to combat it. 
and, and Bangladesh was specifically chosen for this program because of uh, the, you know, just the focus of a country that has not contributed to the problems of climate change as a global power, but is deeply affected by it. And so um, that's what that photo is. I think, I forget where exactly this photo is, was taken in Bangladesh. I think it's in one of the largest mangrove forests in the world. So great opportunity for you if you want to, especially have an interdisciplinary experience um, and sort of have that experiential learning abroad. Um, taking what you learn in the classroom and then continuing on with it after after you finish up the class. A couple of other MULA trips I'd like to highlight. There was one about community sustainability in Costa Rica. Uh, and there was also one about culture, political and media movements in Senegal. So a lot of opportunity to, again, explore whether maybe for two weeks or maybe a traditional semester long program, if that's what you're interested in. And a little more than 50% of our students go abroad in case you're wondering the likelihood of it or how, how often it is. Um, it's very much a part of the culture at Muhlenberg. You'll see posters all over campus of study abroad in session or look at this program or take this Mueller course. Um, you can't miss it when you come to campus. And again, like I said, when you when you start your career at Muhlenberg, when you start your time at Muhlenberg, there's June summer advising that you take as a first year. And so these are good opportunities with your, your advisor to start the conversations about pursuing study abroad. A couple of the things I want to mention about the first year experience before I forget, um, every first year student at Muhlenberg will take uh, what's called a first year seminar class, FYS, and these are interdisciplinary classes focused on writing. So no matter what background you come from, no matter what sort of high school experience or your comfort or experience with writing, this class is going to help you um, focus in on your on college level writing. And so it's a, um, and the classes are really fascinating. These are classes I really wish I could take because the titles, every time I read the full list of the the FYS classes that are offered. I just get so excited that I want to take them all. Um, there's one popular FYS class called Coffee, and it's taught by a chemistry professor. Uh, and, her, and her role in teaching the class is not necessarily the, the science behind coffee, but more of sort of the global impact uh, and globalization and the culture and politics behind coffee. Um, other FYS classes have included, there's one about Quentin Tarantino films, there's one about the Salem witchcraft trials, one about race and politics in the US. So a lot of opportunity to pick something that you find interesting with sort of the secret goal of this is gonna help me be a fantastic writer. And you need to be a fantastic writer. It doesn't matter what you go into, whether you're gonna go off to medical school, whether you're gonna be a computer scientist and work in coding, whether you're going to be on Broadway, no matter what you do, you need to be a good writer. And that's something that regardless of your major at Muhlenberg, we're gonna make sure that you do. And that starts with that first year seminar class. Now I want to talk about more fun stuff. So, you know, just in terms of what is campus life like? Like I said, we are a small, tight knit residential campus. What that means in terms of numbers is almost all of our students live on campus. About 91% of students live on campus and we guarantee housing for all four years. We have first year residence halls on campus. We have upper class residence halls on campus. Um, and we also have off campus houses, but I say off campus very, you know, hesitantly because it doesn't really, it's not really off campus and what you may see at other universities where it's a mile away or you have to take a shuttle to and from campus. These off campus houses, we have about 30 of them, um, are in the neighborhood that we're in. So very much is walking distance still, even if you were staying on campus versus off campus. So a lot of opportunity to be engaged in the residential community at Muhlenberg. This is really important to us because a lot happens at night and on the weekend. Um, in terms of what students do for fun, it really ranges. But like I said, we're a big, uh, you know, performing arts is huge on campus. Whether you are in, want to be involved in that or just watch it, there's so many opportunities to cheer your friends on in a musical theater performance or an a cappella group performance or uh, my favorite, you know, improv performances, stand up, student stand up comedy groups. So a lot of opportunity if that's something that you're interested in. Um, we also, uh, about a quarter of our students are varsity athletes. We have 22 NCAA Division III varsity sports. Um, so a good opportunity for you if you're interested in sort of that big school spirit and want to go to a football game, soccer game, and cheer your, your teammates on. And also if you want to be involved in sports as well, right? We have 22 varsity sports, but we also have many more club and intramural sports. Um, and then in terms of what other students do, we have the Muhlenberg Activities Council, MAC, and they put on a variety of events throughout each month for students just to have fun. Um, as I know, last week or this week, there was a glow in the dark, glow in the dark dodgeball tournament. <laughs> so I have no idea how that's going to go around, but um, that's one example of what students do for fun. Um, we also have a variety of just sort of big uh, festivals and events that happen on campus, like Alumni Weekend and Family Weekend, when people come to campus, there's different sort of performing arts events, um, the craft fairs, uh, blow up bouncy houses, just things that happen on the lawn for, for students to engage with and have fun. Film screenings as well, outdoor film screenings when the weather's nice. 
Um, and then uh, two, just in terms of where we are, right, getting off campus and exploring either Dorney Amusement Park, if you need your roller coaster fix, or going into downtown Allentown, or exploring New York City and Philadelphia. So a lot to do, uh, you know, whether you're choosing something that's happening Friday night, Saturday on campus, or the opportunities outside in our lo local area and sort of the um, tri-state area as well. And just in terms of numbers, again, we're a small school, right? It's about 2,000 students. We have 118 different student clubs and organizations. There was a lot to choose from, whether these are identity-based groups that you want to be a part of, whether these are performing art groups, whether these are other groups like the Beekeeping Society or Enact or Plant-Based Advocates, um, or you know, the variety of ways to sort of just meet your peers and get to know people. Um, and last year, we held 177 on-campus events. So I'll have to show that number two again. There's a lot that happens throughout the week on the weekends. Um, so this is a place where it's small enough to where you feel like you get to know people and feel like you're a big part of the community, but also large enough to where it's vibrant and things are happening and you have a lot to choose from on any seven, you know, given night. And then um, in terms of admissions and financial aid, so I think this slide is a little fuzzy, but um, hopefully you can see the words. We are on the Common application. Um, we look when we look at your application on common app we do a holistic review and this may be a term that you're very familiar with it may be a term you're um not familiar with but holistic means that we are looking at all the different pieces of your application so imagine that your application is like a pie and there's different pieces of the pie no one piece is sort of going to you know, dominate everything else right um so in holistic review we're looking at your transcript letters of rec extracurricular activities personal statement maybe optional materials, if you do an interview or you know a theater audition, all of these are sort of components of the application to help us answer two questions. Is this a place where you will be academically successful? And what kind of community member will you be? I always like to say, we're not just admitting students, we're admitting roommates, we're admitting club leaders, right? We wanna see students who are engaged inside and outside of the classroom. But something else I'd like to highlight too is that it, it is important for us to see sort of like what have you done and what have you been involved with, right? So on the activity section of the Common App, I spent a lot of time reading what you put there, right? Whether you're involved in sports or clubs or um, outside of school things, service, um, just to get a sense of what you're interested in. But we also look at a student's potential to contribute, right? Maybe because of COVID, you haven't had a chance to be able to actually get involved in things, or um, you just haven't, maybe you're at a high school where you're not really, you're not sure, or you haven't really sort of found your place and found your people and really sort of dove into something. Um, at Muhlenberg, we're really big on just character and really getting a sense of what your potential to contribute would be like. So that's where other pieces of the application are helpful as well, where we look at letters of recommendation, like what kind of student are you? What kind of person are you? Um, and see, is this a place where you can contribute Contribute, but also grow at. Um, you know, college is a place that is really much a growing experience too, and we want to make sure that that's sort of the right environment for you. So we're looking at what you've done, but we're also looking at the potential of what you could do. So all of that is holistic review. And then when we look at your transcript, you know, your application is read by someone who understands your high school, right? We also have territories is what we call them in admissions. Um, so like I said, I read for my territory of the West Coast. And so I'm familiar with the high schools I'm reading. I'm familiar with the cultures at the high schools, the curriculum, right? Maybe this high school offers APs and this one doesn't. Maybe there's a cap or a limit on rigor. Um, you know, so I get a sense of what is sort of, uh, you know, uh, understood at the high school and the type of rigor, and I look to see how you've taken advantage of that rigor, if appropriate and available to you. Um, and then I always like to say, too, we look beyond just the GPA, right? The GPA is, is not just a number to me. I, I look at the whole transcript to get the story behind the GPA, your grade trends, if they've gone up and down, or increase or decrease in rigor, right? I'm trying to get a sense of this whole, your whole uh, sort of transcript experience and not just one number on it, so that makes sense. What also helps us in the review process are letters of recommendation. So at Muhlenberg, we require one from one academic teacher. So that's a teacher from English, math, science, social science, foreign language, um, or your, and in addition to that, your school counselor. So these help us get a sense of sort of bring your transcript to life. What do you actually like when you're in the classroom? Some highlights of your academic experience. Or maybe how do you react to setbacks, right? Sometimes the best letters I've read are classes where students struggled because that's actually where you got to know your teacher well um, and they can provide insight on how you, how you sort of work through that. Our testing policy, we have been test, test optional since 1996, so a very long time. Um, so you are welcome to submit testing, and if you want to do so, that can also be self-reported. But also, again, we've been test optional for a very long time. 
Um, and that bullet point there about test scores are required for some academic partnership programs. I mentioned earlier the UPenn Dental and SUNY Optometry programs. Those are when those are programs that do require students to submit testing, um, but testing is not required for the, the bulk of our applicable outside of those programs, if that makes sense. So that's what that bullet point is about. And again, if you have more questions about those two programs, I'm happy to answer that. The other piece of our process, uh, admissions interview, these are optional. This is an optional piece of the process. And as you go through your college search process, whether you're a high school senior or you know, finishing this up, or whether you're a junior or younger and thinking about this, some colleges may require interviews. Some may um, just make them optional. Some may not even offer them. So interviews are sort of very varies across colleges. What we like to do at Muhlenberg is we really want to get to know you in the process. Um, I think hopefully you got the sense of that through my presentation that we are a very small intentional place where students and faculty really get to know each other. And through that, in the admissions process, we want to get to know you. So we do not require admission interviews, um, but they are recommended and they can be helpful for us with merit and honors program scholarship consideration. If you are a senior and you have questions about how to sign up for an interview, you're welcome to ask me that. You can also go to our website. We offer virtual and in-person interviews. And just so, uh, in case you're not for an interview is usually about a 30 minute conversation with someone like me, uh, an admissions officer, maybe an alumni interviewer, not a member, but you know, other schools may do that. Um, and so this is the person who is interviewing you asking questions about, you know, what do you want to study in college? What has been your favorite class in high school? Why are you interested in our school? So these are questions for us to get to know you, make your application sort of come to life, but also it's a two way street. I think your interview can help you get a better sense of that college too especially if you don't have the chance to visit and you just need to sort of meet someone from there to get a sense of what that campus and that culture community would, it would be like. And then in terms of admission and financial aid, we offer need-based aid and we offer merit scholarships. Uh, if you and your family will be applying for need-based financial aid, go to our financial aid website to see deadlines and what's required. We do, uh, for the sort of general you know, spiel of what's required, we take the FAFSA. We do not require the CSS profile. If Muhlenberg is a top choice for you um, and you are considering applying early decision, we offer early decision one. Um, the deadline is today, November 15th, or we also offer early decision two. That deadline is February 1st, same day. Okay, I'll just look ahead and then I'll come back. Um, uh, early decision one is due November 15th, early decision two and regular decision are due February 1st. If you are considering early decision because we are a top choice for you, but if you are worried about the financial piece or want to just know more about what that could look like at Muhlenberg, you can request a, an early financial read from our financial aid office, and you can find that form on the financial aid website. And this would give you an indication of what your scholarship and aid package could be should, should you choose to apply early decision. Okay, I'm going to go back. Uh, and then so... Um, just by submitting your Muhlenberg application, you're considered for merit scholarships. And our merit scholarships range from $1,000 up to $30,000 per year. Um, students are also considered for this bucket here, honors program scholarships. We have four honors programs at Muhlenberg. These are small cohorts of students. Uh, and if you are chosen for and one of our four honors programs, that would come with it, that $5,000 a year award scholarship. Honors programs are, like I said, cohorts you'd be a part of for four years at Muhlenberg. You take a special first year seminar class related to your honors program. And then throughout your four years, there's different workshops, classes, events, faculty mentorship opportunities that you have through that honors program. Um, and then the last bucket here, talent scholarships. Um, so students are also can be considered for talent scholarships with an art, dance, film, music, or theater. You do have to either do an audition or submit a portfolio for review in these areas. If you are interested in this, either you want to do an art portfolio, theater audition, something within one of these areas, check out our uh, website and the instructions for each subject area and what you need to do to be considered for this money is on our website. And then I think let's get, go back here. Okay, uh, let me actually go. I got my slide that over here. Any more information, you're also welcome to contact us. There's our uh, email address, our phone number. Um, again, like I said, we're on Common App. And then now let me go back. I have my slides out of order. Sorry. <laughs> A couple of things, just updates on campus. Um, we have just uh, a new building on campus It's um, and it ha will house a variety of different spaces on campus. I mentioned the polling center earlier. That's where that will be, the Institute of Public Opinion. It's also going to be an incredibly sustainable building. Remember, I said one of our newest majors at Muhlenberg is sustainability studies. That's something that we are really passionate about. 
And um, our, one of our newest master's programs that we have on campus is a master's in applied analytics. So I wanted to highlight this because I noticed that a few of you were interested in computer science and it looked like sort of maybe data analytics. Check out this program if you're interested in it. It would be a four plus one program. That would mean four years at Muhlenberg and then an additional year at Muhlenberg to get your master's in applied analytics. You may like this program if you like math, computer science, analyzing data, um, that may be a program that's of interest to you. Okay. So that now officially ends my presentation. I'll put the slide up here again from a Ron Common app. You can reach out to us if you have any questions. My name is Anna Marie Fami. Um, I will also put my email in the chat and I'll stop sharing my screen now and see if we have any questions. But thank you all. And thank you, Anna Marie Fami, for your very in depth overview of Muhlenberg College. I really appreciate it.